Good day. My name is Laksh Bell. I want to talk to you about whether you are too early to the next bull market or whether you are too late and which is better. So today we are talking about whether it's better to be too early to the beginning of a bull market or it's better to be too late. And the answer is probably going to surprise you because a lot of people are now beginning to invest in cryptocurrencies and stocks and options. Today, we are going to talk particularly not just about cryptocurrencies, but also in general about investments and markets, so on and so forth. Uh, I was unable to make any videos last week because the studio was rented out. It's not my friend's studio. It was busy basically for the past 10 days. So I was unable to get it. And today is the last time I'm going to be able to use it because I'm traveling out of the city tomorrow. So I wanted to get this video out there so that we could uh, basically talk about uh, whether we are in a bull trap right now or the bull market has begun because we know Bitcoin went down to 18,000 and now it's all the way up to 24,000 roughly 22, 23, 24,000 and whether you should invest or not. I already did a video about this. You can watch it right here uh, where I talked about why I'm not going to be buying any Bitcoin at $24,000 levels. In fact, I'm going to be selling some of those Bitcoins that I hold currently even hold. Uh, so if you haven't checked out that video, uh, go ahead and check it out. But today, uh, things have obviously changed. And I want to talk to you about whether it's better to be too early or too late. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I took some notes uh, just so I had, um, you know, a coherent structure to present to you. And so we'll get started now. So the first thing is, what happens if you lose let's say 75% of your portfolio, okay? Let's say you start with $4 million or, yeah, let's say $4 million, yeah? That's where you start. And then you lose 75%. That's what you lose. What are you left with? Well, now the portfolio is $1 million because you've lost 75% of your portfolio, so you've lost $3 million, and so the portfolio is just $1 million now. How much money do you have to make in order to get back to $4 million? Or what kind of returns do you need to in, in order to get back to your $4 million? This is something that you really need to understand that the fundamental job of every investor is basically risk management. Here's why. To go back from $3 million to $4 million, uh, $1 million to $4 million, you need a 300% gain in portfolio. In other words, in order to cover a 75% uh, downturn, you need to get a 300% gain on your entire portfolio. And that's just close to impossible, but it's very easy to lose 75%. This is why risk management is the fundamental thing you should be worried about. If Bitcoin goes to $35,000, that's okay. You know, it just went up 33% or, you know, even less than that, 30%. If Bitcoin goes down to $10,000 from this level, you've lost almost 60% of your portfolio. This is what you need to understand. If you are investing now, there is a potential for the markets to, there's always a potential, there's always a risk. But right now, there is a potential for the markets to go down way below where they are right now, way below the previous dip, which was $18,000. So you need to understand, if you lose half your portfolio okay if you lose half your portfolio well guess what you need to make back 100 percent gains in order to get back where you were where you started off so if you lose half your portfolio now 60 percent of your portfolio if you lose 60 percent of your portfolio how much do you need to make you need to make 150 percent gains in order to just break even this is very important to understand. If you risk $10,000 and you lose 60% of that, you're down to $4,000, then you need to get $6,000 back on a $4,000 portfolio, which is 150%, which is insanely difficult. This is the part people don't understand. So I really want you to understand that your job as a manager of risk is to minimize your risk. And then, if you can still make some profits, all good, you know? Uh, you'll make money when the markets go up, that's fine. You don't have to be too early, and I'll tell you why it's actually worse to be too early. It's much worse to be too early than it is to be too late. So let's look at how markets work, how bull traps work, how markets work, how bear markets work, how bull markets work, okay? 
This is what a bull market looks like. So let's draw the price of an asset. This is the price, okay? The price of an asset versus time. In a bull market, the price goes up. It goes like this, you know? That's a bull market. Most people are trying to time the bottom of the bull market. This is the exact strategy that you do not want. And I'll tell you why. What you need to know is where you are in the bull market and how confident you are about whether or not there's a bull market. When you're around here, well, you're reasonably confident that you're in a bull market, okay? But so far, the candles have been really small. In a bull market, the larger candles come towards the end. These mega candles, the ones that you really want to ride all the way up, they come towards the end. So what you're looking for is an entry somewhere along the way. Here, 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 somewhere over here. You want an entry when you have confidence that you are in a bull market, you are indeed in a bull market, and all the signs point to this being or that being a bull market. If you are taking a chance that market can go down, it can be very risky for you for the reasons we've just discussed. You can lose a lot of your portfolio. You want to be sure that you are in a bull market even if you miss out on the first half of the bull market. So let's say a bull market continues from let's say 2023 all the way to 2025. That's three years, right? Well, I don't want to get in at the beginning of the bull market and I'll tell you why. You have to understand the risk part of this. I don't want to get in at the beginning of the bull market. I want to get in when I'm relatively confident that the bull market is here and the prices are still low. You know, if Bitcoin is going to go from, let's say, 20K to 200K in the next bull market, right? 20K to 200K. I don't care whether I enter at 20K or at 30K or at 10K. Those numbers are much smaller than the big wicks that you're going to see from 30K, 40K, all the way to $200,000. And so that's what you want to capitalize on. The big wicks. Those are the important ones. And like every exponential thing, like everything that follows a hockey chart pattern, the bigger wicks come towards the end. That's the important thing to understand. The bigger wicks, the big, huge, juicy, lucrative wicks, those candles that you really want to ride all the way up, those come towards the end. If this is a bull market, even if this is the beginning of a bull market, in the beginning, like everything exponential, you're not going to see a whole lot of price action in the next few months, even if the bull market has already begun and there's no way to be confident about it right now. And I'll talk about the factors why. However, so if you are too early, it's not important. As you can see, it's not important to be too early, right? You can be a little bit late to the market. You know, imagine having bought Bitcoin at $7,000, $8,000 instead of the $3,000, which was the all-time low for the previous bear market, right? The 2017-2018 crash, 2018 crash for Bitcoin. You probably didn't, weren't able to get in uh, at $3,000, but even if you got in at $4,000, $5,000, you wouldn't really be complaining when you rode it all the way to $65,000, $69,000, right? So the bull markets are very forgiving, is what I'm saying. You may not be able to 10x your money, you can still 5x your money in a bull market. And the amount of time required is really small towards the end of the bull market is when really juicy stuff happens. I can sit on my US dollars, on my USDC, TUSD, TrueUSD, Trust Token USD, or uh, Binance USD or PAX USD for the next two years without incurring a lot of risk. And I can just sit on it and still be able to ride the bull market because we are just going to be somewhere around here. You know, the big juicy VIX will actually indicate that the bull market is about to end. When you see those big juicy VIX, you need to know that, uh, you know, it's soon going to be time to get out. So you can technically stay in the market for a very short period of time instead of being in the market all the time and uh, take advantage of that because all of it follows the hockey chart curve. However, if you're too early, you're taking on a risk. What's the risk? Well. What if it's a bull trap? Like that, you know? You buy somewhere over here, or you buy the dip here, and then the price cascades all the way down here. What if it's a bull trap? You don't know that it's not. You can't be confident that it's not. 
It might very well be a bull trap. You don't know that it's not. There is no way for you to know that this is not a bull trap. So you could be buying a dip only to find out that there's another dip and then there's another dip and then there's another dip pretty much like the Luna guys. I wouldn't get into a market until I'm confident that the bull market is here. It's arrived. Everyone's talking about it. And you still want to be early. You're still going to be early because you're constantly looking at it. You're going to see indicators. We'll talk about some indicators. You're going to see um, people talking about it. I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about when I get back into the markets. But now is not the time because if it plummets from 24K down to 10K, well, guess what? I've lost almost 60% of my capital invested in Bitcoin. And that's just Bitcoin. Alts do worse. Ethereum does worse. In a bull market, Ethereum does better. Alts do even better. Some of the alts do even better. In a bear market, Bitcoin does best. Ethereum does worse. Alts do even worse. So it's like 80-85% decline for Bitcoin, 90-95% decline for Ethereum, and 95 to 99% decline for the alts. So if you're into altcoins or other cryptocurrencies or native currencies, and I believe that I am, I still hold a small portion of my portfolio in coins, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it's like 20% of my portfolio. It's my reserve bag, let's say. Most of what I'm going to buy is going to come later at a much lower price. And what if the price doesn't go down? Well, I don't care. You know, buying at 24,000, you know, would have given me, let's say I had um, 120K, right? I've done this example before. If I had 120K at 24,000, if I bought now, it would give me five Bitcoin. At 36K, it would probably give me how much is that? Um, uh, 3.5 Bitcoin, let's say. So I'm basically risking only 30% of my total bag which is fine instead of and that's 35 percent of potential gains really right um instead of risking actual capital and risking it going down by 60 percent you have to understand that going down the portfolio the value of your portfolio going down is a lot less forgiving than um you know getting late or arriving late to the party and taking only a small portion of the huge 20x ride if Bitcoin goes from 10,000 to 200,000, that's that's 20x, okay? That's 20x. And if I'm only able to capitalize on 6x, 7x, 10x out of it, I'm okay with it. The thing that I'm not okay with, it, uh, with is uh, basically buying right now and then going all the way down to, um, yeah, whatever, 10,000, 5,000, 4,000. It's possible. Bitcoin goes down to 10,000 or even below that. I used to have limit orders at $14,000 because I wanted to get in to Bitcoin, buy more Bitcoin at $14,000 or less. But I've canceled those limit orders because I'm waiting for confidence that the markets have begun turning around. And I don't have that right now. So here's what you need to focus on. How are you going to feel if you invest, let's say, half of your portfolio in Bitcoin now and then it crashes by 60%? You're going to, you're, you need to think about that situation. You're probably thinking only about the upside and that's where most people in the investment world uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, they don't behave like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett will be the first to tell you that your job number one as a portfolio manager is to never lose your capital. What's job number two? Never lose your capital. Don't lose your capital. Don't risk your capital. And right now, you're taking on a lot of risk by being bullish on anything, including real estate, including stocks, including cryptocurrencies of any kind. Now, if you want to have a reserve bag, I understand that. But you need to have a solid financial strategy about that. And we'll probably talk about that in an upcoming video in the future. But for now, you need to understand that there's a lot of risk in getting into the markets right now. Uh, you may want to have limit orders set. I do have limit orders set for about half of my cash, but I like to have dry powder, you know? Uh, I'll tell you why. You get so much more. You get so much more. Uh, imagine, let's say you were into hex, okay? Imagine buying hex at 50 cents, okay? For, let's say, 100K, you would be able to get 200K hex. Today, for the same $100,000, you can get 10 times as many hex. You can get 2 million hex today. More than 2 million hex today. What if price plummets to 2 cents? Well, for the same $100,000, you can get 5 million hex. 
There's a huge difference between 200,000 hex and 5 million hex. Oh, but what if price went up to 75 cents? Well, instead of 200,000, you would have gotten whatever, 133K. Who cares? That's a very forgiving situation. This, not so much. If you bought hex at 50 cents or more and it's below 4 cents today or around 4 cents today, you have lost 92% of your capital. As of right now, you would have been much better off just buying or keeping or holding on to your US dollars or Great British pounds or euros or whatever. It's always going to be risky to be too early to a market. You're always going to be okay being a little bit late to the market, being a little bit late to the party. You miss out on a little bit, but that's just a 20%, 30%, 40% risk on the upside, on the potential upside that you miss out on. That's almost nothing compared to the potential or the possibility of losing 50, 60, 70% of what you have in your pocket right now. I cannot stress this enough. This is the rule number one. This is the first rule for every investment uh, manager, which is what you are. If you're an investor, you are a portfolio manager. Even if you're only managing your own portfolio, you're a portfolio manager. And right now, and let's talk about why, okay? Let's talk about why. So first of all, let's talk about the interest rates, okay? And we know Fed has hiked in interest rates. They say they're doing this to curb inflation, but that's not how it works. Inflation is a function of money printed, okay? Once the cat is out of the bag, it cannot be put back into the bag. Inflation is a function of money printing. They're constantly printing money, non-stop. They've been printing money for the last, they've printed more money since 2008 than ever existed. It's maybe, maybe three, four, five times as much money since 2008 that has been printed as was printed since the inception of US dollar. And rest of the world does worse. You can look at the exchange rates and you can see how that's going for everyone. Euro has literally crashed against the dollar. It used to trade at a 15% premium over the dollar. Now it's trading at almost one to one. It dipped to under one to one. So it, deep, it got de-pegged basically by or it got toppled by, uh, uh, by the US dollar. So no matter what currency you are in, the currencies are faring really badly here. All currencies are faring really poorly right now. But US dollar is doing best of all compared to all the other garbage currencies there are, which US dollar is one of the garbage currencies, but it's the best performing garbage currency of the year. Um, so interest rate does not control inflation. Interest rate controls how easily accessible that cash is to people uh, who want to take out a mortgage, who want to take out a loan, because guess what happens when you take out a mortgage to buy a house? Well, you spend that money, someone else gets that money. And you know, some of that money is spent on brokerages or on, um, uh, on, on maintenance, on insurances, on paperwork. Some of that is transferred over to someone else who might invest in a different real estate or in a different class of assets, so on and so forth. And it makes the money move. And so what happens when you increase the interest rate is people don't have a lot of surplus money to invest in risky assets such as cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are very, very risky. This is a class of asset where 80, 90, 95, 99% dips are not just unu not unusual, but also expected. People expect those dips. You expected those dips. If you're smart enough, you took advantage of those dips or you're going to take advantage of those dips. You're trying to be, um, you know, someone who times this market well, hopefully, um, but you don't want to try to time the market. You want to uh, trade or you want to get in and out based on confidence uh, uh, about whether or not a bull market or a bearish trend has begun or not. Anyway, so as they increase the inflation rate, the amount of liquidity in the in the economy in circulation is going to go down and fed has doubled down on that they even said as much we don't care too much about that all we care about is keeping our power uh, um, essentially that's what uh, powell said uh, in his last press conference he just said that we care about keeping our power uh, and the the narrative around uh, increasing the interest rate about uh, lowering inflation, that's just a total lie. Inflation is a function of money being printed. And once you've printed some dollars and they go out into the system and there's reserve ratios, so on and so forth, that cannot be undone. It doesn't matter how much you tighten up the interest rate. So right now, 
cash is going to get really scarce. Over the next few months, you're going to find that cash is going to get really scarce. And when cash is scarce, guess what people spend money on? Most people spend money on food, on their rent, on their mortgage payments, on their car payments. Guess what? Gas is still very expensive, isn't it? Everything is getting more expensive. I don't pay a lot of attention to that, but I do on a macro scale uh, because everything is getting expensive while cash is getting tighter. Businesses would be forced to let go of some employees. What happens to those people? Well, they're living on welfare if they can or social security if they can, unemployment maybe. Um, they don't have that much money to spend. So what do they spend it on? Bitcoin? No. Hex? No. Elrond Gold? No. Ethereum? No. They're going to spend it on gas, on milk, on food, on meat, on fruit, on produce. That's what they need in order to survive. And there's barely enough money for them to be able to survive. How are they going to invest? That's the, that's the vast majority of your economy. And the same effect happens with companies as well. Companies with huge billion dollar portfolios as well. Because cash is cash. If it's tight, it's tight. Even if they're very profitable. Even if they're highly profitable. It doesn't matter. So that's the first factor that leads me to believe that the market is nowhere close to arriving just yet. I could be wrong, but like I said, if you're already in a bull market and a little bit late to the party, that is a very forgiving mistake that you can make. This brings me to the next point, which is tech stocks. Cryptocurrencies, as we know, are now highly correlated to tech stocks. When the tech stocks do well, cryptocurrencies do well. When tech stocks go down, cryptocurrencies go down. Okay, so I want you to look at the share prices for Wish. Wish was trading at $32 at its all-time high last year and now it's down to $2, less than $2. Robinhood is down 87%. 87%. Stitch Fix, 90% down from its all-time high. Peloton, 83% down. A firm is down 81%. This is regardless of the fact that you are looking at Peloton odds, ads, you're seeing Peloton ads everywhere you go. I mean, I have not been able to escape those Peloton ads everywhere I go. Best Buy, subway stations, everywhere. Same thing for a firm. You go to any website, you're going to find an option to use a firm as a payment method. Open Dower is down 78%. And uh, it actually went down 23% in a single day. We're talking about a tech stock here. We're not talking about a cryptocurrency. This, these things happen in cryptocurrencies, but this is very rare in the stock market. And you're telling me this is not a recession just because White House said, oh, don't worry about this being uh, six months in a row of GDP shrinking. We don't think it's a recession. Let's redefine what a recession is. Well, um, you can redefine whatever you want. You can redefine uh, someone born with uh, a different set of body parts as being someone else. But that doesn't change much, does it? Uh, Roku is down 77%. VIX is down 77%. Redfin is down 76%. Toast is down 75%. I mean, you're telling me this is not a bull market. This is, this is a bull market. Does this look like a bull market to you? Everything is down, even tech stocks are down and real estate bubble has only just begun popping right now. When it does, it's going to pop hard. And you know what? I would rather have dry powder when things go down, crash to the ground, burn to the ground and assets are, are available to buy for pennies on the dollar. You know, in the last bull market, a friend of mine was able to buy an apartment for uh, an entire apartment, a very nice condominium for $15,000, $15,000. This normally goes for $150,000 to $200,000, or it used to before uh, the 2008 recession. And he was able to buy it for $15,000. And that thing would have probably sold for $400,000 last year, <laughs> or even until, um, you know, um, the beginning of 2022 because of how the markets were. And I want to be in that prime situation where I have the dry powder to be able to buy what I want to buy when the markets crash and burn to the ground. Because that's how wealth is made. That's how you make enormous wealth that basically goes on with you for the rest of your life. That's what you want. Then look at the leaders. Look at what leaders are doing. Zuckerberg has sold 
मस्क हैज सोल्ड बेजर्स हैज सोल्ड सत्य नडेला ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट ही सोल्ड टू हंड्रेड एंड एटी फाइव मिलियन डॉलर वर्थ ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट स्टॉक डज इट साउंड लाइक द सीईओ ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट बिलीव दैट हिज स्टॉक इज गन गो अप दीज गाइज नो समथिंग you know sure they're going to buy back at a later date and they're going to take pocket 500 million dollars 200 million dollars a billion dollars 50 million dollars in the process you know there's a whole list of ceos who have dumped their own company's stocks and they're probably going to buy it back except in the process they made very nice cars they bought very nice uh, planes and boats and yachts and stuff like that you know made investments in other stuff such as cryptocurrencies or are, are waiting with their dry powder to make <laughs> investments in cryptocurrencies and stuff so when the richest people in the world are dumping stocks you think it's time to buy them and if bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are correlated to tech stocks while the ceos of tech stocks have been dumping the entire year you think this is a bull market you think this this is an indication for the beginning of a bull market you're going to learn a harsh lesson probably i don't know i don't have a crystal ball but you might just end up learning a harsh lesson here so it's important for you to protect yourself and we have to talk about the bull whip effect what happens is i just read an article which said that if you buy something from walmart or target which is not very expensive let's say some electronics worth 100 bucks or so 50 bucks or so and you want to return them they might just say you know what destroy it donate it trash it do whatever you want with it we'll give you a refund just don't bring it back do you know why that is that's because they have too much inventory last year we had a problem that there was not enough inventory now they have too much inventory at least for certain goods because they overestimated the demand because there was a lot of demand so they ordered too much except now there's not a lot of cash because of the rising interest rates so the rising interest rates means that there is not a lot of liquidity in terms of cash flows uh in in the economy and people are buying less and less stuff and so now they have too much inventory on their hands and guess what they're going to do well they're going to order too little so next time or in the next phase let's say they're going to have too much too little stuff and then much more demand and then to accommodate that demand they're going to order too much stuff and then there won't be enough demand and that is what is known as the bull whip effect because it looks like a bull whip they have too much inventory but there's no demand they have too little inventory so they can't meet the demand and that goes on and on and on and on and on it's very typical of recessions uh, to have this bull whip effect i can actually link to a video right here i don't know if my channel is uh, eligible for that or not if if not you can find it in the description below uh that talks specifically about bull whip effect and you know who's talking about that michael burry or who's banking on that it would that would be michael burry the same guy who called the real estate crash made hundreds of millions of dollars for himself and his investors in the previous market in the previous recession 2008 uh, they even made a movie about him the big short okay so here are some people you want to follow i'll link to that video about burry of course you can watch that video uh, and that specifically is about the bull whip effect and you want to understand the bull whip effect uh, in detail uh, because that is what is going to happen in the next few months or what is likely to happen in the next few months then there is a channel called maverick of wall streets and a particular video uh, has him discussing the ceos of the tech markets dumping their own stock and i want you to watch that video carefully it's a long video he does long presentations so if you're not following his channel you really should and cto larson he also did a video recently where he talked about he doesn't have confidence that the bull market has arrived which is basically the conclusion that i had as well so at the end of the day i want you to understand that if you wait if you just hold on to the dry powder you can potentially buy more a lot more for a lot less if the recession is as bad as some of us think it might be you're probably going to be able to buy a lot more for a lot less money or for the capital that you have the dry powder that you have right now is going to be able to get you so much that you're going to be riding all the way to the sunset into the sunset in the next bull market of course Right now it's time to be patient. At the end of the day all I have to tell you once again to iterate 
if you are buying now you are potentially only gaining a little bit here compared to someone who enters here right you're potentially gaining a little bit compared to someone who enters here but you're risking a lot so you might gain 33 percent 40 percent for a potential 70 80 60 percent loss and that is just bad risk management that is just bad asset management Again, as an investor, your fundamental job is not to get married to your bags, not to get so invested, so heavily invested, so primarily, so deeply, passionately in love with these projects that you love, that you forget all about the fundamentals of investing. That's what a lot of people are doing. You don't want to make the same mistake. People are making that mistake, let them. You can't stop everyone. But you got to be sure that if you're spending your capital to buy assets, to acquire assets, you're doing it when you have the confidence that you're solidly, squarely in a bull market, even if that means you miss out on the beginning 30-40% of the gains, which is fine. We're talking about 10x, 20x, 50x, 100x, 1000x in some cases. Some people think Pulse Chain is going to do, and I'm not one of those people, but if it does, you know, I'm going to be taking those profits myself. Uh, Pulse Chain is going to do 1000x. We'll talk about that in the future when that happens. But if it's going to do 1000x, who cares about the 40% here that you're probably going to make by investing now? Okay, you can wait it out for another 12 months, maybe six to 12 months. And still, even if we are in a bull market, even if you think this is a bull market, the worst case scenario is that you miss out on the 30 to 40 percent that this bull market is going to show through a consolidation phase, right? It's going to go through a consolidation phase. So you're just going to miss out on the 30 to 40 percent that this consolidation phase might get you. And that's only if this is a bull market. If it's a bear market, if it's a bull trap, you're basically screwed. So once again, too early is bad. Too late is definitely bad, but I would always choose to be too late compared to too early. My name is Laksh Bell. I hope you learned something in this video and I hope you focus more on risk management going forward because that is the fundamental key to investing like a pro. Everything else, you know, oh, I made 5000 X. It doesn't matter, man. If you can do something repeatedly, you're already going to be famous about it. People are already going to be learning from you. So don't tell me about the one project, that one single instance where you were able to capitalize on 50x or 500x with your $300 portfolio, which is what a lot of people on crypto do. You know, crypto Twitter. They talk about, I had this guy who was arguing with me about how one day could make you rich. And I said, how? He said, I had $1,000. I bet them all. Now, I don't remember which obscure project uh, that was, but some obscure project that went up a thousand X in one day and I was able to take profits at 50 X and I get, got from one one thousand X to 50 X. And I said, 50,000 X, uh, 50,000 dollars. And I said, uh, uh, you know, that's a one off event. You just got lucky. What happens if you risk your entire portfolio next time? And instead of going 50 X, you go to minus 98 X. That's 50x on the other side, right? You lose 98%. So you go from $1,000 to $50,000, that's 50x. But if you go from $1,000 to um, $20, you've basically just lost 98%. What happens then? Well, then you're going to have to get lucky just to get back where you were. So risk management is the most important thing here. Um, my suggestion, and this is not financial advice as always on this channel, we don't offer any financial advice, uh, but I, you know, tend to talk in terms of what I would do if I were you or what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for, um, uh, for confidence, a lot of confidence that we are back into a bull market and I'm going to see that confidence across the board. So you're going to look at tech stocks and they're going to be rallying. You're going to look at cryptocurrencies and they're going to be rallying and it's going to be a stable rally. Check out CTO Larson's video. Like I said, he talked about why this rally does not have the kind of confidence you need in order to be able to confidently say, okay, it's reasonable that we are in a bull market right now. He has his own indicator and he talks about that. Pretty great video. You should check that one out as well. My name is Laksh Bell. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.